Our guest today on the World Cafe, Matthew Sweet, captured an audience back in the 1990s, starting with his masterful release, Girlfriend. For the last few years, he's been involved with other projects, including the Harmonies of the Thorns with Pete Droge and Sean Mullins, and an album of covers with Susanna Hoffs of Bangles fame. Now he returns to jangly guitar rock with the new album, Sunshine Lies. In a recent issue of Performing Songwriter, Matthew said that certain songs for him pop out like flowers in my mind. Thinking that was uh, very poetic, I asked him what he meant by that. For me, creativity is a thing where when it's working, it is kind of like nature or something. It's just sort of happening or not, you know. Um, I think that uh, especially with uh, poppy, jangly kind of guys like me, people think of it as being um, a little more put together than it probably is, you know. <laughs> like, right. I don't, I don't plan every little thing, you know, to be really clever. Um, so for me, I guess as I've gotten older, I just look at it more that way all the time. Now, do you get into trouble where you when you try to plan it out? I, mean, I, I can see that happen to other artists. Um, yeah, I mean, I can get into trouble in various ways. Like the <laughs> the thing that popped out can just not be good, you know. Yeah. Um, that happens a lot of the time. But when things are good, it's kind of you have a feeling about them being worth you know doing something with. It's kind of hard for me to say because I can't say I've ever like really worked at something for a super long time, like trying to make it go. I will tend to just have a more shotgun effect of having lots of ideas and pursuing lots of things, however lowly, and then uh, certain things just kind of rise out of that. And the great thing about doing it that way is you might get some stuff that otherwise, you know, picking by song you might have thrown away, but sometimes a, a, an odd little thing will lead to something that's really interesting. This album, you, you talk about things being the poppier songs, and then you talk about things being being the rockier songs. There are definitely some uh, some cool examples of that, uh, including one uh, called uh, called "Room to Rock." Um, does that mean you kind of bash these out when when they first come up, or, or how do they? Uh... Well, there was there was a big batch of really rock stuff that the album sort of started with. It was a little bit of uh, reaction a reactionary effort on my part, I think, to play lots of loud electric guitar after I'd been working on the Thorns thing for a couple of years, and it was very uh, a very different thing where we all had to be harmonizing and hearing everything, and it was really kind of the opposite of that. So when I got back on my own, the first thing I wanted to do was just kind of go crazy a little bit, and I recorded a bunch of songs, and, and uh, both Richard Lloyd and Ivan Julian came through town right during that time, so I had them both play on a bunch of things. Unfortunately, not that many of those ended up on the final album, but but uh, in the days of the internet, we at least know, you know, any extra tracks will find their way out there, and people that really want to hear it will get to. Yeah, huh? indeed. Um, and Room to Rock is is one of those I know I've been played on. Can you do that one? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> 